Welcome everybody to my talk, Simplifies the Development of Single Domain Antibodies Using the StrapTech Platform. Today, I'd like to present you a case study that was conducted in cooperation with Nanotech, another German company that is specialized in the development of single domain antibodies that are also well known as nanobodies. So to get an idea why we wanted to develop such a single domain antibody, First, let's have a look to the tax technology that is provided by IBA. This is a traceless affinity cell selection technology. And it allows you to select a specific cell like CD19 cells or CD4 cells from a sample like human blood or mouse blood. So how does it work? Um, the system consists of two components. One is a streptac team agarose matrix, and the second one are twin streptac fab fragments. So streptac teen is a streptavidin variant that um, has an increased binding affinity to the streptac, that is an 8 amino acid peptide. And we use agarose beads where we immobilize streptactin for this technology. And you can use it in gravity flow columns, an example. The second component is the FAP that is directed against a specific receptor of your target cell, in example, CD19 or CD4 or whatever you like. And this FAP is fused to a twin strap tag. And by loading the FAPs on the streptactin matrix, the FAP is immobilized on the agarose beads. So actually, this gives you an uh, affinity matrix specific directed against the target cell you like to immobilize and to uh, select. So in the second step, you load your sample, in example, human blood or mouse blood, on the column. And the target cells will be bound by the immobilized FAP, while our other cells can be washed from the column by just adding wash buffer. So after you remove all unwanted cells, you finally um, elude your target cells by just adding biotin to your wash buffer. And the biotin will displace the twin strap tag from the strap tag team and leads to elution of the FAP and therefore to an illusion of your target cell. And the advantage of this technology is that you finally end up with untouched cells. So competing systems that are using high affinity antibodies have the problem that the antibodies after the selection are still attached to the cells, sometimes together with uh, microbeads that are conjugated um, with the antibody. And this can induce signaling in the cell or to internalization processes of the antibodies and magnetic beads. However, our FIB fragments have a low to moderate affinity. And while they are immobilized on the column, you have a high local concentration of these FABs. And this provides sufficient bindings to your target cell to keep them on the column. But once you elude the cells and the FABs and you have both components in solution, the FABs will dissociate from the cells quickly and you can wash them away, finally leaving untouched cells. So the question here was, are there alternatives to FAB fragments for binding? And that's why we wanted to develop a uh, anti-mouse CD19 single domain uh, nanobody or antibody because single domain antibodies have some advantages compared to FAPs. First, they have a very high stability, which makes shipping of the products much more easier. And they can be produced at very high yields in shaking flasks in E. coli cultures or fermenters as well. And finally, you don't have to sacrifice any animals for the development of such single domain antibodies. So in order to use a nanobody for our tax technology, we wanted to achieve three goals. First, the nanobody should finally um, result in high yields of the selected cells in our tax process, and the isolated cells must be provided at very high purity. 
And in order to achieve this, we require a high association rate of the nanobody as well as a high dissociation rate. So the nanobody is finally released from the cells. The process of the single domain antibody development um, includes many different steps. So the first step is your antigen production, and uh, you have to express, purify, and quality control um, the proteins that you want to use for immunization of the alpaca. So in the second step, you immunize the alpacas and select the B cells that present an antibody against the mouse CD19 antigen. The second step is a clone screening. And um, here we perform cell staining experiments on a flow cytometer, as well as a further characterization of the clones by using BLI sensors and doing kinetic studies. And last but not least, the nanobodies were tested in the tag selection process. So let's have a first look to the antigen production process. And this whole process can be supported by the StrapTech platform that was used for the antigen purification and for quality control. So in the first step, we expressed our mouse CD19 antigen in our Maxi 293 cell line, um, which is a cell line IBA provides. And after the expression, the supernatant containing the twin StrapTech antigen or twin strep tag mouse CD19 protein was loaded on a strep XT protein purification resin. Strep XT is a variant of strep that has a very high affinity to the strep and for the twin strep which are two strep we end up in an affinity of a picomolar range. But because this is a result of the two strap tags and the avidity effect, it's still reversible. So we can still elude the protein from the column once we add biotin to the column. So by the strap tracking XT purification process, we obtain high, uh, highly pure protein. And in the next step, the twin strap tag mouse CD19 was analyzed in a Comessi SDS page gel, followed by confirmation of the identity in Western blot, and also additionally um, in a binding experiment on BLI sensors. Another portion of the produced protein was used for immunization of the alpacas. And for this step, we removed the twin strap tag from the protein by a TEF cleavage process. So now let's have a look to the results. On the left side, you can see the SDS page Comasi gel of the eluted protein. And you can see that we were able to purify the mouse CD19 protein we used here, the extracellular domain at very high purity. The mouse CD19 yield was three to seven milligrams per liter, which was sufficient for our immunization experiments. Then we confirmed the identity of the eluted protein by Western blood. And here we use streptactin conjugated to HRP and the streptactin binds to the twin streptac. And because the mouse CD19 protein is the only protein in the sample that contains a twin strap tag, the positive signal in Western blood confirms identity of our mouse CD19. In addition to ensure that the mouse CD19 protein was produced with a correct confirmation, we performed a binding study. And here we used streptactin XT that was coupled to BLI sensors that can be used in the Blitz device or the octet system. So first we loaded a twin streptac fab directed against mouse CD19 that was already developed on the streptactin XT BLI sensors. And you can see that this induces an increase of the signal while the um, twin streptac fab was bound to the sensor surface. And after that, we applied our antigen. And you can see that this used a second signal, depending on the concentration of the antigen. And that confirms that the FAB binds the antigen and makes us confident that the protein was produced 
with the right conformation. The second step was the immunization and the B cell selection that was conducted by Nanotech and I thank them for the information provided next and for the work in this project. So here's a Nanotech's workflow for the B cell selection. And they developed a very interesting way in order to, to select the B cells that present the antibody directed against the antigen. And what they are doing is they use the tax technology, but instead of loading a twin strep tag fab, they loaded the twin strep tag antigens that we produce on the tax agarose matrix. And this leads to the generation of an antigen agarose matrix, an antigen affinity matrix. So they used the blood from the immunized alpacas, loaded the blood on the gravity flow columns, and all B cells that present an antibody against mouse CD19 were immobilized on this mouse CD19 affinity column, while all B cells that do not present an antibody against mouse CD19 were washed away from the column. Then the B cells were eluted and Nanotech performed RNA extraction followed by RT-PCR and cloned the nanobody genes into plasmid that um, also provided finally nanobodies with a twin strep tag. The um, lysates of the E. coli um, cultures were tested in ELISA and um, finally nanobody and Nanotag gave us the clones that uh, showed a promising signal for further evaluation. So the next step was a clone screening. And here again, we used the StrapTag platform for cell staining experiments. So the first test was if the nanobody clones bind to the cell, in, to the mouse CD19 in the native environment of mouse CD19. So in order to do this, we used fluorescence dye conjugated streptactin that was mixed with a twin streptac nanobody, creating a fluorescence reagent specifically targeting the mouse CD19 receptor on the cell surface. And the nice thing about this technology is that you can use streptactines conjugated to different fluorescent dyes in order to easily um, prepare your own detection reagent without the need of any uh, conjugation or coupling processes. So if the nanobodies can um, bind to the mouse CD19 on the cells, we will get a positive staining signal. After that, we look if the nanobodies were released from the cells, which is important for the tax technology. And therefore we added biotin to the mixture. The biotin releases the fluorescence conjugated streptactin from the nanobody, and this will shift the population of the cells into the unstained population. And two things can happen in one uh, in the first scenario, the nanobody is released from the cells. And in the second scenario shown below, the nanobody is still attached to the cell. And if we then do a restaining by adding again fluorescence conjugated streptactin, um, nanobodies that are still attached to the cells can be restained and shift the um, cell population back into the positive fraction in the flow cytometer analysis. If the nanobody was released from the cell, the streptactin cannot bind to the cell and the cell will um, stay unstained in the analysis. And after that, we characterized the clones using the BLI census again and performed kinetic studies. So by using um, this method, we identified seven positive clones in our cell staining experiments. And you can see the positive clones by the shift of the population into the red gate. While the majority of clones actually showed no staining. And I guess the reason for that is that we immunized the alpacas with the extracellular pure component of the mouse CD19 protein. So 
Um, there are epitopes uh, presented to the immune system where the alpaca can make antibodies, but in their native context on the cell surface, these epitopes might be blocked by bindings with other receptors or membrane proteins. And so in their native context, these um, epitopes cannot be targeted by the nanobodies, which leads to a missing staining signal in our experiment here. So this seven clones were screened for the dissociation of the nanobodies. Again, the cells were stained as explained before, and we can see that all clones give a nice staining signal as expected. Then we added the biotin and you can see also as expected that all um, cells were shifted back into the negative fraction. And when we restain the cells, you can see that we finally identified four clones where the nanobody was dissociated from the cells because these clones like clone number five um, didn't show a shift of the cells into the stained fraction um, during the restaining. However, for example, clone number four or 10 or 26 were restained and that um, proved that these nanobody candidates were not released completely from the cells. We confirmed this by BLI experiment. So um, in the upper graphic, you can see an example of nanobody number five, 17 and nanobody number 26. And actually nanobody number five is the most promising candidate because you can see it shows a very high association rate and also a high dissociation rate. Nanobody number 17 also showed a high association rate but a lower dissociation rate. And nanobody number 26 showed very low association and a low dissociation rate. So this nanobody is expected to finally result in low cell yields and a nanobody that is not releasable from the cells. And if you look into the table below, we highlighted in green um, candidates with high association rates and with high dissociation rates. And if you compare the results to the standing experiments, you can see that clones with high association rate, um, as expected, showed also a good staining signal and clones with a high dissociation rate also showed uh, dissociation in the staining experiment. So um, the only um, clone number 26 is an exception here. Um, even if this clone have a very low association rate, it showed a staining signal actually due to the very low dissociation rate. So however, clone number five was the most promising candidate here. So we confirmed this in the tax selection process. First, we did a high throughput screening using a speed catch and find Nexus tips that are PIPEP tips where we are able to trap our tax agarose resin in the pipetting tips so we can uh, perform tax purifications in parallel. And here you can see the results for the selection of mouse CD19 cells using nanobody clone number 5, 9, 17, and 26 compared to the already developed mouse CD19 fab. And as expected, clone number five um, provided the highest cell yield, followed by clone number nine and clone number 17. And clone number 26, as expected, showed very low cell yields due to this low association. So this tax experiment confirmed that clone number five was here the best clone for tax selection. So we finally tested this clone into the tax selection process. We applied the CD19 single domain antibody on a tax agarose gravity flow column, followed by load of mouse CD19 positive cell samples here, mouse blood. And then we washed the columns and finally elude our target cells by adding biotin. And you can see on the right side that after selection, we ended up with a cell purity of 92% CD19 uh, positive cells, 
And this finally was totally in line with our goals. Therefore, we showed that clone number five is able to obtain cells, mouse CD19 positive cells at high yield and at high purity. And that brings me to my summary. The Streptech platform is perfectly suited for the development of single domain antibodies. You can use it for the clone screening process using fluorescence conjugated streptactin for the cell staining and uh, streptactin XT coupled on BLI sensors for reliable kinetic binding studies. Uh, you can use the streptactin XT purification matrix for obtaining high pure um, antigen for your immunization in an easy and robust uh, one-step affinity chromatography step. You can use a Streptac technology for the B cell selection, which avoids the phage display in um, this process to antigen specifically isolate B cells. And last but not least, you can use a technology in your quality control for Western blood using HRP conjugated streptactin or anti streptac antibodies or streptactin XT BLI sensors to determine binding efficiency. So, finally, I'd like to thank Nanotech for their cooperation in this project and especially Dr. Hans Jörg Götzke and Dr. Stefan Frey and the founder of this project. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much.